Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is one of the most influential composers of the classical era. He is remembered today as one of the most revolutionary composers of Western music. Mozart is one of the few composers of his era to compose music for all genres. At a young age, he was traveling to perform music and began writing music of his own. Some of his most influential works for time moving forward included, but were not limited to, operas. Two of these operas were La Noce di Figaro and Così fan tutte, both of which he collaborated with Lorenzo de Pont, who was an Italian opera librettist. Both of these operas involved the themes of love and deceit. Due to the influence Mozart had on the libretto of these operas, I consider them to be revolutionary. In both Così fan tutte and La Noce di Figaro, the protagonists are the servant characters Despina and Susanna. Writing an opera that even entertained the life of a lower-class character was unheard of, let alone having them be heroines. By doing so, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was able to help people realize the inequality between gender and class during a time when the lower class were considered to be incompetent and women were thought to be incapable of thinking for themselves. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born January 27, 1756, in Salzburg, Austria. His mother was Maria Pertl Mozart, who was reared in a middle-class family. Leopold Mozart was his father, a very successful composer and violinist at the Salzburg court. Mozart also had a sister named Maria Anna, who was nicknamed Nannerl. Both Maria Anna and Wolfgang were introduced to music at a young age by their father. At an early age, Leopold was teaching Wolfgang everything he had studied about music, and Wolfgang learned at a highly accelerated rate. Wolfgang soon showed signs of excelling beyond his father's teachings with an early composition at age five and demonstrating outstanding ability on harpsichord and violin. He would also learn to play the organ, piano, and viola as he grew older and studied music further. As he grew older, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart began facing new challenges as he was not taken as seriously as he had wished. Adult Mozart struggled to escape the seven-year-old image that most people saw him as because that was his age when he began performing. This affected Mozart's ability to expand his experience since doors did not open as they had so easily when he was a child prodigy. This seemed to frustrate Mozart because his only true desire was to compose music. Without doubt, writing music was what he did best and loved best. Throughout several years of his young adult life, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart has been quoted as saying, I am happier when I have something to compose, in 1777. I love to plan works, in 1778. My beloved task, composition, in 1784. And I like hard work, in 1791. During the 18th century, if one was born in the lower class, they would remain in the lower class, and for those born in the upper class, they would remain in the upper class. The social class that one was born into was the social class they would most typically be part of throughout their entire life. This would include the lifestyles that each social class would entail of. The lowest class, the peasants, were often farmers and craftsmen. The wealthiest class was the noble class and were granted power over others. The middle class were the people who bridged between the lower class and the noble class and often worked as doctors, lawyers, merchants, and military. The middle class was reluctant to help poor people because they did not want to reward bad habits. For instance, they would rarely donate clothes or food to those in need because the middle class felt that those in the lower class did something to deserve their social status. They also began imitating the aristocratic lifestyles such as buying estates and involving themselves in similar hobbies. In the 18th century, musicians felt as if they were equal to the noble class, yet were required to please them for decent wages. Many musicians tried to stay clear of the line that separated themselves from the noblemen, but Mozart often challenged the separation. Whereas the Baroque era saw the artist firmly planted in the role of the servant, the classical period, the Age of Enlightenment, catapulted the artist to a new level, even a new class. At the time that Mozart's operas were being produced, it was groundbreaking and scandalous to include any lower class characters as main characters in the story, or to make the higher class characters the bad guys. 
Mozart selected specific librettos where the heroines were the lower-class servant characters and the upper-class characters were sometimes more ignorant or naive. Most of the operas that Mozart chose to compose reflected on the real-life scenarios and emotions of each class through the characters. The conflicting claims of passion, reason, and honor on the human heart were central concerns of 18th-century opera, but only because these had long figured among the essential topics of European literature. Mozart definitely incorporated these conflicting claims and how they played into the relationships between characters in both Le Nozze di Figaro and Così fan tutte. Most operas at this time often incorporated love into the plot, but during the 18th century, true love was hard to come by for the noble class. True love was not entirely dead in Vienna. It was just confined to the middle and lower classes. Even the lesser nobility generally married for reasons of financial or social standing. Though many of Mozart's operas included lower-class characters, made the servant characters the heroine of the storyline, and generally showed the upper class as arrogant or a mockery, aristocrats constituted the majority of the audience at the theaters. At public performances, such as the Concert Spiritual in Paris, members of the nobility were the chief patrons, but much of the supporting funds came from middle-class music lovers who bought season tickets to hear the music live and then bought home versions of the printed music for rehearsing at their leisure. The most successful performed composers from 1783 to 1789 at the Berg Theater were Italian, not German. This made it hard for Mozart to have a successful career in Italian opera. Though his skill of composing instrumental music exceeded many of those who were Italian. Aside from his identity, another reason it was difficult to begin his career in Italy was due to his reputation. Being that Mozart was a child prodigy, people expected more of him than they did of other composers, such as those that he had considered his competitors. Mozart's father, Leopold, wrote a letter to Mozart's sister, Maria Anna, on April 28, 1786. He wanted to inform her about the first performance of Le Nozze di Figaro, explaining how Mozart has so many cables against him for this simple reason, that he is held in such high esteem on account of his unusual talent and ability. Nonetheless, Mozart took extra steps in order to gain more knowledge to succeed, such as looking at other works becoming more popular at that time. When he was feeling inspired, Mozart searched through many librettos before finding one that he felt truly passionate about. Dupont writes about Mozart coming to him and asking how easy it might be for Dupont to turn the comedy The Marriage of Figaro by Beaumarquis into an opera. The trouble with turning The Marriage of Figaro into an opera during that time period was that it had recently been forbidden by the emperor for the German theater company to stage it as it was considered too candid for the public to see. For a male, let alone the emperor, the idea of a grand lady prevailing through the wit of her own personal maid was completely absurd. In order to have more of a possibility to do the comedy, Dupont suggested that they write the music and words in secret and wait for the right moment to present it to the emperor or theater directors. Mozart was deeply involved in the shaping of the libretto. Others, in obedience to the demands of music drama, were moved to a different point. Although some parts of the comedy were different and some parts were completely thrown out once it was transformed into an opera, much of the comedy stayed the same as well as the plot and theme. Not simply about comic tussles between master and servant or between men and women, but about the interplay of real human beings. For all his revolutionary tactics in the presentation of realistic characters and the female experience, Mozart nevertheless appealed still to the 18th century process of characterization. Mozart points out through his composition of La Noce di Figaro the equality of social classes as well as genders, but brings life to the reality of 18th century traditional elements. The characters of La Noce are Figaro, ex Barbara of Seville, and principal valet at the palace of Aguas Frescas. He is self educated, ambitious, and in debt. Figaro is intended to cause questioning of the inequality between social classes. Susanna is a 19-year-old competent yet capricious girl. She is the niece of the gardener, the lady's maid, and Figaro's bride.
Count Almaviva is an extremely wealthy man married to the Countess Rosina. Bored, unhappy, unpopular with the tenants, fancies himself as a woman chaser, which gets him into trouble throughout La Noce de Figaro. The Countess Rosina is a gentle girl who is very devoted to her husband, Count Almaviva. Barbarina is a lovely young girl who hopes to one day marry Carabino. Carabino is godson to Countess Rosina and is going through puberty throughout La Noce di Figaro. Antonio is Barbarina's father and is the gardener. Don Basilio is a music teacher and Don Curcio is a lawyer. Don Bartolo is a nervous medical doctor who is summoned by Marcelina to Agas Frescas. Marcelina is a middle-aged woman whose goal throughout the opera is to force Figaro to marry her. She used to be governess to Bartolo's ward Rosina and housekeeper at the palace. Each of the characters made the audience feel their emotions and sympathize with their real 18th century lifestyles, all while challenging class and gender stereotypes. The characters were more lifelike, the situations most unflattering to male aristocrats anywhere, the dialogue positively impudent, showing the servants bettering their master and giving eloquent justification for themselves too. Figaro is a fast-moving score, as it had to be, to cover the complex events of such a long play, even expertly trimmed by DuPont. The original La Noce di Figaro by Beaumarquise had 16 characters. When DuPont wrote the libretto, he only kept 11 roles and had to simplify some parts of the plot. Figaro is an opera of reconciliations between Figaro and Marcelina, Figaro and Susanna, the Count and the Countess, and, at the end, the whole little community of souls who inhabit the castle. The opera takes place in 18th century Spain on the wedding day of Figaro and Susanna. Susanna confesses to Figaro that Count Almaviva has tried to seduce her and Figaro swears to get revenge on the Count. Parla che c'è di nuovo. Il signor Conte sta andando ad arcacciando le straniere bellezze forestiere. Vuole ancora nel castello ripetare la sua sorte. Ne già di sua consorte. Vada bene, appetito gli viene. E di chi dunque? Della tua Susannetta. Di te? Di Benedesma. E la speranza che al nome il suo progetto utilissima sia tal vicinanza. Bravo, tiriamo avanti. Queste le grazie son, questa locura che mi prende di te e la tua sposa. Guarda un po' che carità pelosa. Che fa te, orrie del peglio. Don Basilio mi ha messo di canto il suo mezzo. Nel darmi la lezione mi ripete ogni di questa canzone. Chi basilio o birbante? E tu credevi che fosse la mia dote merto del tuo bel muso? Me ne era lusingato. E la destina per ottener da me certe mezz'ore. Che il diritto feudale. Come nei feudi suoi non ha il conte abolito. Ebbene, ho repetito e par che tenti riscattarlo da me. Bravo, mi piace. E caro signor conte, ci vogliamo divertir. Provato avete. In the second act, Figaro creates his revengeful plan on the count with Susanna and Rosina to send Carabino dressed as Susanna to meet with the count. The plan initially fails when Count Almaviva walks in. Afterwards, Marcelina walks in with her lawyer, Bartolo, demanding that Figaro must marry her if he doesn't pay her the money he owes her. In Act 3, Figaro discovers that he is, in fact, the son of Marcelina and Bartolo. Figaro and Susanna continue with the wedding, and Marcelina and Bartolo get married as well. Throughout this act, Count Almaviva still keeps trying to pursue Susanna, so she and the Countess alter their original plan to prank the Count and dress Countess Rosina as Susanna to meet him in the garden that night. In the fourth act, the Count meets Rosina disguised as Susanna in the garden, and the Count tries to seduce her. Immediately after, Countess Rosina reveals herself, and Count Almaviva feels extremely guilty, ashamed of what he has done. Let's <laughs> 
It took approximately six weeks to compose La Noce di Figaro, though the orchestration and revisions took place many months later. Mozart composed the opera to have very little counterpoint and have more arias than ensembles. When it came time for DuPont and Mozart to exhibit the opera to the emperor and theater directors, Count Rosenberg was against La Noce di Figaro ever being performed due to its controversy, but the emperor was intrigued. DuPont and the emperor had a good relationship with one another, which was a large factor of why they were able to carry on with the production of the opera. La Noce di Figaro was performed nine times between May and December 1786 and was then withdrawn. Figaro remained thereafter in the Vienna repertory until November. Further performances followed in 1790 and early 1791. After Mozart's death, it was not performed again until 1798. Così fan tutte is considered a demonstration comedy, which means that the title, Thus Do They All, tells what the outcome of the drama will be. The theme of jealousy and its musical signifier were not the only means by which Mozart and his librettist encouraged spectators to associate Così fan tutte with La Noce di Figaro. Aside from their origin, which has been traced back to the Commedia dell'arte, Così is very similar and sometimes even refers back to La Noce. Both operas incorporate multiple similar aspects to each other, such as love, deceit, disguise, and infidelity. Così fan tutte also falls in the 18th century drama subgenre of sentimental comedy. Its plot is based on the officer's sentimental conviction that their women are superior beings and on their fiancé's pity for the mysterious strangers, which is manipulated into something that they mistake for love. It was this fathomless ambiguity of gesture and meaning, as much as its immoral plot, that made this work so problematic at the time in history. During the time period that this Così fan tutte came out, it was not acceptable for an opera to have the servant characters make a mockery of the upper-class characters, though Mozart did so easily. The mockery in Così of Fidelity and Love by the philosophical Alfonso and worldly wise Despina was not likely to encounter open sympathy in the Vienna of Joseph II's successors at a time when personal and political freedoms were coming to be equated with radical notions emanating from revolutionary France. Così fan tutte shows the challenge that the characters face with masking their appearance but not being able to hide their emotions. Ferrando and Guglielmo are both soldiers and victims to the plot as well as their lovers. Dorabella and Fioriligi are sisters. Dorabella is dating Ferrando, and Fioriligi is with Guglielmo. Despina is the sister's maid. She is very straightforward and conspires with Don Alfonso persuading the girls to cheat on Ferrando and Guglielmo. Don Alfonso is an old philosopher that persuades the two young men that their women will cheat if tempted, simply because they are women, and that is how they all are. If one designs an experiment with a particular conclusion in mind, controls the data, changes the experiment midpoint when it's not going as planned, and single-handedly guides the interpretation, then it's no surprise that the outcome, women are like that, is exactly what Don Alfonso had planned. The character of Don Alfonso is the reason why Mozart titled the opera Così fan tutte. The opera takes place in 18th century Naples, Italy. The first act begins in a cafe where Don Alfonso has a debate with Ferrando and Guglielmo. Don Alfonso explains that all women cheat, though the soldiers don't believe him, and they all make a bet on who is right. This leads to Don Alfonso creating a plan in order to manipulate the outcome so that he wins the bet. To get started on his plan, Don Alfonso confronts the soldiers' lovers Fioriligi and Dorabella that the soldiers had to deploy for battle. As part of his plan, Don Alfonso has the soldiers disguise themselves as foreigners and introduce them to the sisters. Fioriligi and Dorabella are sad, but uninterested in the disguised men. Act 2 begins with Despina taking payment from Don Alfonso in order to convince the sisters to cheat on their lovers. The sisters then begin talking to the men, but select the opposite men of who is their original boyfriend meaning that Fioriligi is now with Ferrando 
and Dorabella is now with Guglielmo. In their disguises, the men are eventually successful in seducing their sisters. This angers the men because they did not think that their girlfriends would cheat. And when they tell Don Alfonso, he replies, women are all like that. Soon after, the sisters agreed to marry the disguised soldiers, and they then remove their disguises. The sisters get angry, but beg for their lovers' forgiveness. The soldiers forgive them and promise not to deceive them again. They all forgive each other, and Don Alfonso tells them to simply laugh it off. Mozart's work on Cozy seems to have been unusually rushed, to judge from the many abbreviations in his autograph score. The composition was likely to be done, although not the orchestration, by December 31st, which was the scheduled date of the small opera rehearsal. Mozart and Dupont were able to make the opera a huge success, even though many noble people were against it when it was originally introduced. Così Fantute went into performance on January 26, 1790 to a packed house, the biggest recorded in the theater's archives for that season. Many people in modern time are unsure of the popularity of the opera due to the emperor's death towards the end of the opera season, which limited the number of performances. Joseph II died February 20, 1790, and by the time of his death, Così Fantute had been performed five times. Due to his death, all of this opera's performances were put to an immediate hold throughout all of Vienna. The delay in reviving Così Fan Tutte is likewise explicable in terms of changing patronage from Joseph II to Leopold II. Once it was able to be performed again, it was also translated to play in other languages. Così Fan Tutte received its French premiere in the original language in 1809, but the opera was nonetheless cruelly mutilated by cuts, retextings, and reassignment of pieces. There are several similarities between Mozart and Dupont's La Noce di Figaro and Così Fan Tutte, one of these being that the heroine of the operas were the servant characters Susanna and Despina. In each of these operas, the protagonists coolly manipulate the affections of others. In La Noce, the theme of reconciliation is shown through the work of the Countess, but in an even deeper sense, the protagonist of the drama is Susanna. From the beginning of the opera to the end, Susanna knows who she is and what she stands for, whereas Marcelina discovers motherhood and the Countess rediscovers herself as a wife. Mozart shows her importance by having her take part in every ensemble. At one point in the opera, Countess Orsina sings in one of her arias, first loved, then insulted at length and betrayed, now I must look for help to one of my servants.
It is Susanna who is directing all of the events that occur in Act 3 and 4, such as the letter written by her and Rosina to Count Almaviva, the disguises they wear, and the plan to meet Almaviva disguised to catch his infidelity. All of the delectable and nervous intrigue of Act 4 has been scripted, stage-managed, and invigilated by Susanna, who now stands in the shadows but was on the parade throughout. Due to the fact that Susanna sings in all of the ensemble pieces and how often she is on stage, it is obvious that she is a huge part of the opera. Susanna appears to be the character that is able to balance out the rest of the characters in La Noce di Figaro. Similar to Susanna, Despina in Così Fan Tutte is a servant character who controls the outcome of a lot of the situations throughout the opera. For example, though Despina helps devise the patently transparent ruses of Alfonso's plot, she is also taken in by it, the trickster tricked, as in many a folk tradition and numerous comic operas as well. Despina agrees to partake in Don Alfonso's plan because it allows her to have a hand over the sisters in teaching them a lesson, not out of spite, but because she believes they will be better off for it. It is in fact Despina that gives the best explanation of love when she says to Fiordaligi and Dorabella that it is not that all women cheat, but men do cheat too, as it is not of woman's nature, but of human nature. In the beginning of the opera, she explains that she is an underappreciated and underpaid maid, so to be able to control Fiordaligi and Dorabella in teaching them a lesson gives her satisfaction. The character of Despina and her emotions are also brilliantly shown through Mozart's compositions. Quinario is used for the principal sections of both Despina's arias and for her appearance as the doctor in the first finale. The meter is as much part of her personality as is her libertine philosophy. <laughs>
Despina may seem cynical due to her blunt actions, but it shows how she is real and not artificial like most other characters in Così fan tutte. It is clear that this social order outraged Mozart not only with regard to what he considered his own servitude, but also with regard to women. In both La Noce di Figaro and Così fan tutte, Mozart puts the lead character as not only a servant, but a woman as well. In doing this, he is sure to make these characters the heroine of the plot. Mozart does this to show his appreciation for women, and especially of lower class, which is not a topic that is shined upon in that time. Men had felt that women lacked intelligence and were not important enough. There is no doubt that the depictions of women in Mozart's operas are deeper, broader, and more interesting than the depictions of men. In both La Noce di Figaro and Così fan tutte, the men in the operas perceive women to be fickle and unfaithful. Yet this also happens to the men, so that, in fact, not only do all women do that, but men too. This is apparently human nature. Mozart typically shows the men in Così and La Noce to be easily confused or have lesser morals. Despina asserts the power of the female over the male, saying, It doesn't take much wisdom, it's female intuition. It can be assumed that Mozart had a lot of say on how each character was presented in the operas he composed, as shown through the personalities of each character, especially the servant character. Mozart's operas La Noce di Figaro and Così fan tutte grew extremely popular for straying away from the normal opera themes of the 18th century. Not only did the upper and middle class people go to the opera, but so did the lower class. Ordinary people were clearly interested in characters who were, or were fancied to be, much like themselves. People often gained a sense of relief and assurance because they are able to relate to the characters that share similarities with them in the opera. Displaying them attempting to successfully cope with the class conflict while coping as well with emotions and reactions representative of the average individual. Mozart did not believe in treating people different based on the separation of class, nor did he believe that men were more capable than women in any certain way. In fact, Mozart seemed to express that women were often more interesting and capable than most men portrayed them to be. For example, Mozart and Dupont write in La Noce di Figaro, Surely all women ought to support one another when we think how we're treated by our husbands and lovers. Oh, tis our duty. But we, poor hapless womankind, who sacrifice our all to men, receive from them but perfidy and pain that's hard to bear. This is an excerpt from when Susanna and Countess Rosina are sitting together transcending the separation between class and realizing the similarities between each other and their men. Through both operas, Mozart allows the audience, through the composition of the music and the meaning of the text, to appreciate women, human behavior, and the equality of all individuals. Due to the respect that Mozart had for the lower class and middle class, as well as for women, the themes of Così fan tutte and Le Noce di Figaro became revolutionary for the roles of these people in the 18th century and years to come.